On this video, I'll be sharing how I got seven distinctions at the University of Cape Town. No. The first, the first, the most important thing. Hi, beautiful people. This is Pimelo. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, you are welcome as well. For those of you who don't know me, I am doing my second year of medicine at the University of Cape Town. And on this video, I'll be sharing how I got seven distinctions in metric. The subjects that I did in high school were physical sciences, accounting, life sciences, mathematics, um, CPD, home language, English, first additional language, as well as life orientation. And the high school that I went to is War School in Wordland. So let's get to it. The first important thing to do for yourself is to set realistic goals. And by realistic goals, I mean that I'll use examples. Let's say you're used to getting averages of about 70% and you want to get to an average of about 75 or 80 in the next term or within a period of a year, that is realistic. And let's say you're also used to getting averages of about 80% and you want to improve to 85 or 90 within a period of a year, that is also realistic. But let's say you're used to getting an average of about 50% and you want to get to an average of about 90 or 95% in the next term or in a period of within a year, that is a bit unrealistic. It is important for you to know that while setting a goal for yourself to achieve, it is also important for you to set the specific time frame that you want to achieve that goal. If you set a goal that cannot be attained or achieved within a specific time period, that will demotivate you to work towards that goal. And therefore you'll start thinking that you are not capable of achieving the goal. In high school, I used to get averages of about 70 in grade eight. I then improved to averages of about 80, 85 and 90 from grade nine, 10, 11 and 12. So please be mindful of the time frame and the goal so that it can be realistic. The second important point is that I was consistent in metric. I would study from Monday to Saturday and then on Sunday I would take a breather. That is the day where I wouldn't touch any books. I would do the things that I enjoyed and that made me feel happy and relaxed. So it is important to stay consistent and by consistency I mean studying every single day and then choosing a specific day that suits you so where you can take a breather, do things that you enjoy, like talking with friends, going out with friends, spending time with your family and loved ones. Without consistency, you cannot attain the goal that you want to achieve. So it is important to study every day. It was important for me to be consistent. And even if I felt like I didn't do enough on a specific day, the fact that I did try to do something, I did try to read a specific, even if it was just a small paragraph or a specific chapter from a book, the fact that I was moving and not staying in one place meant that I was being consistent and I was moving towards achieving my goals. Consistency worked wonders for me and I hope that it can do the same for you. I was not relying on motivation so that I can be consistent. I had to train myself every single day to remain consistent and by that it is important to work every single day because let me give an example. Let's say you have an elephant and you have to eat the elephant. You cannot eat the whole elephant all at once. You have to take chunks and bits by bits so that you finish it. So, and by that example, I did not study the night before or the day before an exam thinking that I will get seven distinctions. No, it did not work like that. I had to work every single day to ensure that I get to where I am today. Point number three is that you should be willing to go the extra mile. And by going the extra mile is that you should not only be relying on the resources that your teachers supply you with in class. Be willing to look for other resources outside, such as study guides, question papers, 
apps that can help you to gain further understanding of what you're studying on. If you cannot afford to buy study guides, what you can do is that you can ask other students who were previously in the same grade as you are right now to give you their resources that they used to achieve what they achieved. Well, for me, what I did is that I bought study guides to help me further my understanding in what I was learning. I also used question papers and I also asked this girl who was in metric the year before I, she gave me free study guides, free DVDs, free question papers. And she was also my mentor. She told me tips on how she got her seven distinctions, how she got on a provisional level, how she achieved the things that she achieved. And I was so motivated by that. I wanted to know how she did it. Also, my school offered free extra classes that I attended every afternoon from Monday to Friday that I gained more understanding on what I was learning on. I also asked my teachers whenever I could not understand for help and that for me did wonders. And that leads me to the next point, point number four, which is asking for help. I emphasize the importance of asking for help because whenever I could not understand a specific topic or subject, I asked for help from my teachers, my friends, my peers, or anyone who would understand. I also used YouTube channels that explained um, concepts that I could not understand in class and that helped me a lot. Moving on to the next point is that it is important for you to use reliable resources. These can be resources that are provided by your school, such as textbooks, question papers. And for those of you uh, that your school does not provide these, you can ask uh, from your friends who are in other schools, but there, it is also important to know that different schools learn different things. For example, this school in English, this one can be doing short stories, this one can be doing novels, this one can be doing poems. So it is important to know that you, should, you shouldn't be studying poems on English while your school wants you to learn short stories. You know what I mean. So it is important for you to get reliable resources or textbooks and know what you're supposed to learn from your school. And well, for me, um, some of the mornings at around 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., I would watch this other show. I think it's on SABC One or Channel 191 on DSTV. Uh, Geleza, Geleza Nati, if you do know it, um, I would watch it because it would teach me, um, it would teach the specific concepts that I needed to know in accounting. Point number six, as I have mentioned before, is that it is important for you to take your time off from studying, to take your personal time, to have your own personal time where you just relax and you just distress from all the studying because honestly, studying sometimes can be can get tiring, especially if um, you do not take a break from studying. So it's important for you to set a designated day or time where you just say, you know what? I don't want to see books. I'm just relaxing. I just want to dance. Or if you do enjoy dancing, I want to sing. I want to go out, spend time with my friends, family, or whatever thing that you enjoy doing, please do. Taking a break is as important as being consistent every day. So please set, um, what I did is that, as I have mentioned, is that I would set, um, on what I did is that on Sundays, I would take, that was my day off, I would go to church, I would come back from church, spend time with my family, with my friends, dance. I love dancing, so I would dance, be active, I would do all the things that I enjoyed doing. So please also set a designated time or day where you can just do all the things that make you happy, that make you feel refreshed and just distress and be okay. And then so that you know that in the next day, I am going to study because I had enough time to play. I had enough time to to let myself be free and enjoy. So it is important for you to do that for yourself. So it is important for you to play, to have a play time and also a study time. That is important because that's what helped me. So, yeah, point number seven. This is so important using past question papers. 
um i recommend 10 out of 10 i recommend this one um please study your content know what you're supposed to know learn the concepts that you're supposed to know but please use also uh past question papers because you need to know the format in which these questions are set you know uh yes you can learn please it is as important to learn your concept and as important to use question past question papers so um please study what you're supposed to study learn what you're supposed to know uh learn um the concepts learn the terminologies everything and then after you're done learning you can then move on to past question papers and practice to now it's like you have the knowledge and now you're putting the knowledge into practice you are testing yourself if you can answer an exam you're testing yourself if you can answer questions that come up in an exam either your your final so after studying it is important for you to move on from studying and then practice with past question papers and test yourself if you are able to answer questions in an exam, in a test, either your gene exams, your prelims or your final exams. It is important for you to test yourself regularly because that's what I did. After studying a specific concept or a specific chapter in a book, I would move on to a question paper and test myself based on that chapter if I can answer the questions should the questions come in an exam because you have to pre you have to be prepared for everything, you know. You have to be prepared you have to know everything and then in the exam um in the question paper i do not i'm not trying to say that you should cram the question paper no that is not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that know the concepts the terminologies the chapters know them very well and then test yourself if you can answer the the concepts if you can answer the questions uh should they come in an exam um, because should uh, I do not recommend cramming um, a question paper um, because what I've realized with question papers is that even though um, the question might not repeat um, in the question paper, they have a specific way in which they ask these questions and you'd find that the pattern is the same you know they have a specific pattern in which they ask questions and it is for it is important for you to familiarize with that pattern of knowing your question your 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 concepts and then moving on to the question papers to familiarize yourself with the pattern of like how to answer the questions um how to deliver an answer because it can happen that you might not know how to answer a question on that specific concept if that question comes you know what i mean so it is important for you to like familiarize yourself with the questions to know how to answer the questions in an exam paper and also please practice being in an exam setting have yourself be in a quiet environment um no help from study guides textbooks uh or friends or family members uh just let yourself be alone in the room write the question paper as if you're writing an actual exam and this way you can familiarize yourself with writing an exam being in an exam setting you know and this will help you a lot that's what i did i would practice question papers use mock question papers i would be let myself be in in a in a quiet environment write the question paper for that duration uh, let's say maybe the question paper is to be written in three hours i would write it for that duration with no help from friends from family just me alone and testing myself and after i would correct myself and if i saw that i got um a wrong on this specific con um, concept or i did not get a specific concept right and correct i would then um learn more correct myself and make sure that i knew the concept very well and then attempt the question paper again you know because don't only test yourself once it is important for you to test yourself repeatedly you know so if you saw that in a question paper you were practicing and you got a specific concept wrong go back to the concept go back to your textbook go back to the uh to your study guides or um whatever resources that you're learning learn the concept and then go back to the question paper again up until you get the concept right because um the importance of question papers is for you to understand that 
um, is for you to know that you are you understand a specific concept and you can answer that concept in an exam or a test that's the importance of a question paper so don't test yourself once practice again and again and again up until you get the concept right when you're practicing with a question paper point number eight i used study groups in metric i had my friends uh every uh, most of the afternoons if we're not attending extra classes from our school would then uh, meet up either in our teacher's class um we asked this other specific teacher if we can stay in her or his class in the afternoon so that we can study together so we would study together we would um you know would study and because um what i love about study groups is that somebody can know something that you don't know and they can teach you that you know that's the importance of study groups is that you can teach each other what you know and what you don't know you know um that's uh that, because that helped me a lot too i gained a lot from my friends they helped me with specific concepts that i didn't know and it was just so amazing and it was a friendly setting because for me i learn better when um i learn for me i learn better when um someone explains a specific concept to me either a friend you know because i am used to them and they're used to me as well so whenever they explain they would use funny examples and the concept would stick in my head because they use like a funny example to explain a specific concept and that was the importance of study groups also another thing of study groups is that we held each other accountable i had to come prepared before meeting with my friends so that whenever we exchange information we would all be in the same track all be in the same level same pace because if you you are meeting with your study group and you're not prepared you would drag the progress of the study group down because you're not on the same level that they are so when you meet with your study group and you're prepared you are now on the same level and you move and you progress even higher because you guys are prepared in that specific concept or subject or whatever it is that you guys agreed upon so study groups for me really helped and that leads me to the next point is that teaching other people what you know this is so important because you teach the more you teach people the more you learn and the more their concept sticks within you have you ever been in a situation where you learn something and then after um a few days or a week or a month you have forgotten that thing that used to happen to me in high school quite a lot of times and by that is that i overcame that by teaching other people whenever i would meet with my friends either when in a study group i would teach them what i knew if someone came to me and said that they wanted me to explain to them something that they don't understand i would teach them and i loved teaching other people i loved teaching my friends um my classmates back then in high school it was so amazing and that helped me to like remember and retain the information that i learned because the more you teach people the more you retain the information you know you understand what i mean uh the translation is that it doesn't enter through this year and then get out through the other year you get what i mean <laughs> that's what i mean and if your friends are willing to teach you a specific concept allow them to teach you so that they also can learn and retain the information you know and you can also learn something new from them because it happens that you might not know everything and your friends know and your friend knows something that you don't know and yes give them the platform to do that and also if someone comes to you and wants to learn something be willing be free to teach them try as much as possible to teach people whenever they come to you for help teach them and that will do you wonders and don't work alone uh, be willing to work with other people to teach other people that will help you a lot no man is an island and by that i mean you can never work alone you need friends you need family you need support from family you need support from friends you need your classmates you need each other and it is important for all of you to give each other the platform to teach each other and to learn from each other final point the most important one for me is that i remember um back then in grade 11 
grade 11 was such a tough year for me in high school i don't want to lie it was so tough i remember um i dropped from an average of about 85 to an average of um 75 or 78 somewhere there um i was a high achiever in high school so that kind of like really hurt me so bad in grade 11 remember you have to use your final grade 11 marks to apply to university and, and i was getting worried and i wanted to get an average of above 80 and 85 in my final grade 11 term you know i didn't want my um grade 11 final results to be in the 70s because the competition is so high guys it's either you are up there and if you're not up there chances of you being accepted into medicine and at UCT are very low so I needed to make sure that my final grade 11 marks were so high as possible as high as possible so what I did I asked my teacher for advice I was like hey I'm getting scared now we are approaching the final grade 11 term and I am so scared I'm getting an average of 70 something and I don't want that what can I do please help me and she was like Pimelo please pray please pray and every single time you study please do this and wow should i tell you that worked wonders for me moving on to metric i also used that um i also used that strategy i would involve god in my studies in every aspect of my life i would involve god i would pray before i would study another thing is that it's so easy to procrastinate in metric you know um i remember i would spend a period where like i just didn't want to study i think it was it happened for a whole week or two weeks if i can remember really well i just didn't want to study i didn't want to do anything i was like no this is not well i started praying that god please help me to deal with this procrastination help me to battle with this procrastination and i just don't want to procrastinate anymore um help me and by praying that actually made me more motivated to study and i just saw the wonders of god in my life i feel like he helped me um in my journey he was with me in my journey of getting seven distinctions in metric of um being in uct it's such a blessing for me well personally i am christian and if you're not christian you are from another religion either muslim or you believe in um the african tradition be in touch with your spirituality that's what i mean work as well do not expect miracles there are no miracles you have to work okay i hope that these tips help you to achieve the goals that you want to achieve and another important thing before you go believe in yourself believe that you can do this and also work hard thank you for listening and we have come to the end of my video. Bye.